Deep in the ocean, an orca pod is on the hunt. But these aren't your average orcas. These guys are organized. Marketing team, did you get those social media posts scheduled for the seal migration? Aye, aye, Captain. We even have an automated notification for all pod managers when they go live. They use Monday.com to keep their teamwork sharp, their communication clear, and their goals in sight. Monday.com. For whatever you run, even orcas, go to Monday.com to dive deeper. Well, I don't see the point in waiting any longer. So let's bring her out. A star attraction. The one you came to see. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Miss Judy Gold. Good afternoon or evening or morning. I don't even know when the fuck it is. Uh, this is Kill Me Now. I'm Judy Gold, and uh, I'm the host. And uh, Lauren, uh, as you know, Hennessy is not here. Or she might not know because he wasn't here last week. Uh, and he's not here this week. So I have my lovely friend, Karen Burgreens, co-hosting. Hi. Hi, Karen. Hi, Judy. Happy New Year. Thank you. And Happy Patrick's June. here. Hi, Patrick. Patrick's so nice. Patrick's Hi. doing the... Um, <laughs> Patrick's annoying. Let me tell you a little bit about Patrick before I, like I introduce our already. guest. Okay. No, I... What did I... Uh, what? Oh, I had... Um, What's her name? I, this fucking oh. my brain doesn't work. It doesn't fucking work. Damn. I had a uh, Shelly Wright on, and she sang a song, uh-huh. you know, f- that she wrote and uh-huh. owns uh, from her new album. And Patrick takes it out of the fucking show, and Shelly Wright's like, "Wait, I just what the fuck happened?" And Patrick's like, oh, "You can't do." do, do. And then yeah. the head of CBS dot shit came in and said, "Patrick, what the fuck is wrong?" So. You know, it was a misunderstanding. Yeah, shut up. Is it really um, dot shit? I love. No, that. it's dot it, but I call it play dot shit. Oh my god! Yeah, that's funny. this is we, we record at the CBS Play dot uh, shit studios. Okay. Uh, welcome to Kill Me Now. It's uh, yeah, whoa. Uh, it's been quite a year. You know, 2016 sucked, and now this is sucking. It's really bad. It's shit. But I love our guest. Thank you. I love it. That, that voice is hot too. Thanks. We're here. You with, look good with the headset. I know. Too. Really? You're really cute. Oh my god. He We're here. Re- you are really cute. You are I'll really handsome. It. Like you've gotten cuter over the years. Which yeah, you've that's what happens to, to men. I think I get better looking. I mean, I'm falling, but I I like myself. You, you look good. I gotta get a fucking eye lift. Anyway, uh, Sam Morell is here, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks Sam for having Morell! me. Woo! <laughs> When I saw it was called Kill Me Now, I got excited. Yeah, because we talk about everything that pisses you off. But first yeah, we talk about so you. so much. I know, because I fucking hate everyone. I fucking hate everyone. I think that's why I liked you, because we both hit a lot of Jewish stereotypes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I complain so much. But it's, it's like, fun. and people are like, you know what? This is what I fucking hate. If you keep talking like that, it's going to really happen. If you keep saying you're fat, <laughs> you will be fat. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth. If I want to say I'm fat, I'll say I'm fucking fat and shut the fuck up. Uh, you're not fat, though. Thanks. Yeah, Sam Morell, I got to tell you something. Yeah. You're such a great joke writer. Oh, thanks. You're fucking great. Uh, I like jokes a lot. Yeah, but you're a true comic, a true classic. Oh, you too. I love, I love what we worked together a couple years ago and there's still a thing you did that made me laugh so what? hard. You uh, you were talking to a young couple yeah, and you were like, do you know what you have to look forward to? And you just start slapping your arm. <laughs> that, that <laughs> you start so slapping funny. it back and forth. Fucking fat ass. I just, and I do planks. I do planks. <laughs> I do TRX. You know the TRX thing? We did yeah. Soul Cycle together. Yeah, we did Soul Cycle, Sam and I. And I was good. You I kind of think good. the only way you can get rid of that underarm thing is... Surgery. Yeah, or that thing where they co- they freeze it. There's some weird thing. You there. can freeze it? There's some weird, like, cool sculpt. What is with your lips, Karen? <laughs> oh, I think it's toothpaste. I'm sorry. No, it's not the John Kerry white thing in the corner. It's, are it? they chapped? Yeah, I think. What is that white? I, that fucking pisses me. I can't when dry someone mouth. has... It's spittle for John Kerry, I think, or a herpes sore. Is no, it but dry it's... Dry mouth, though, now, isn't it? With oh, ice? Did ice? you ever... I had one of the kids' coaches, baseball coaches, always had, like, white shit in the corner of his mouth, mm. and it's like, that was the only thing I could focus on was the <laughs> white shit in the corner. Like, everything he said, I was like, you have white shit in the corner of your mouth, you have white shit in the corner. Like... Did you ever say anything to no, him? No, I have to sneeze. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> bless, bless, bless. Okay, that's the other. I hate sneezing. 
Really? I hate really? it. I like it. It's supposed to be uh, one sixteenth uh, the pleasure of an orgasm. Yeah, no, I it's find it one sixteenth nice the present the the pleasure of because I always do four to seven. Oh, that's and it's fucking annoying, and I hate it. And it's like I'm talking, and then I gotta stop, and my sneezes sound like coughs. All right, this is boring. I was anyway. about to say that doesn't sound like a sneeze. Oh, great. Okay. I'm yeah. All right. On. So, um, Sam Morell. Yeah. You're so cute. You're thanks. You're now you've been doing stand up for eleven years. Yeah. To baby. Yeah, baby. eleven years. Do you know that you're a baby? I know I'm young in comedy. Like I know, like I know not to complain to ever. Like I would never complain to like Nick Griffin or someone. Right. You know, I would never well, complain to a comic who's been in it a long time. Right. Right. But uh, it's hard not to complain because you still have to deal with so much bullshit on the road or like. I, I hate the road, and I've often. But your road is so different than my road. Is it? Yeah, because as I've said before on this podcast. We didn't mm-hmm. have cell phones. We didn't have yeah. computers. True. We didn't have internet. You couldn't make a phone call on the hotel phone because it was so expensive. That's like insane. you, you were so you isolated. A card. Yeah, you were so isolated. Okay. I carried. I. They didn't have Starbucks. I had. Um, I used to car- I used to bring this two cup coffee maker from Zay Bars and my own coffee. Wow. Jesus. And you had you. You were so you couldn't talk to people. It was awful. I bet you got more writing done. Though, you got so think. much writing, reading. You had to, and you really experienced whatever town you were in. This, and, and so you really got a sense of the country as a whole. But I still have PTSD, like loneliness. <laughs> of it was horrible. I wanted to puke. I remember there was one gig, Buffalo and Niagara Falls, and it was two weeks. And the Niagara Falls gig was, it was for the comedy trap. And the Niagara Falls gig was in, you stayed in a motel, like, you know, the fucking uh, Dallas Buyers Club kind of motel. (laughs) And there was nothing to fucking do. Like, you'd be in these, you know, these little business park areas. and, And I couldn't afford to rent a car. Right. And I, I, I also I can't drive, so I can't. I don't even have the yeah, option. Yeah, you grew up. Did you oh grow my up god, in the I city? can't yeah. drive either. Yeah, I can't oh drive. Oh my god, I can. <laughs> <laughs> go go well, on a I, trip with Judy. She'll do all well, the I, 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 I love driving. I'm terrified Lisa. of some of those motels where you're just like out, they're like you expect Javier Bardem to walk I with know, an air right, gun. Right. I, I, some of them are, are like uh, I had one. I was in Laughs in Kirkland and. It was such a shitty. Isn't motel. Kirkland the fucking generic brand? Yeah, that's uh, where they Costco? make all that stuff. Yeah, is that true? Yeah, yeah. And oh, wow. uh, there was a meth head just passed out against my window. No way. Yeah. <laughs> what cl- what club was this? Uh, laughs in Kirkland. The fa- this is the other thing that these clubs <coughs> that would not be clubs if it weren't for comedians put you up in put you place. up in dangerous that, where they shitty, would never stay right yeah where they they treat comics like if they were treated like that it's like when people that's why i always pay my commissions oh, i always yeah. pay my commissions immediately because i know what it's like to wait for a fucking check and right. it's not fair you know but I mean, it, this this guy uh and then the next is time it I did still club, there yeah i think they moved to seattle but i remember the next i've done this club a bunch of times i remember right. the next time i i requested to be in a different hotel and he made the biggest stink about it and he had to drive me to this hotel after the right. show so every show he would be getting fucked up he uh he also had cerebral- no way he drive drove drunk yeah he so he had cerebral palsy so i couldn't tell if he was fucked up right or if it was the pal- and it was both right, right. and he'd be uh he'd be smoking weed getting drunk and i'd just be sitting there like can we get out of here i don't right. want to hang you out let with him you drive yeah, I mean, I mean like it's not something. Do? Yeah, it's when not you don't drive, you do crazy. This things. was like pre Uber. Really? Yeah, you just yeah. there weren't many options. Wow. But I also have to say, like you know, in my former life, I was a lawyer, and like these people putting you in the hotel, these hotels where you don't have a choice. Mm-hmm. If something happens to you, they're on the hook. You know, and of right, course, but you're co- dead. But you're comment. <laughs> no, but and you can't say anything. Like there's so much that goes on in this world that we can't say anything about because. The regular rules of the workplace don't yeah. apply. Right, it's like the wild. That's West. like you know when oh, yeah, you like sexual harassment. Right. Yeah, all of that. Sex, like when you do Broadway shows and or off Broadway or equity stuff. You know, there's I'm a whole for Hamilton. Anyway, yeah, no. you're gonna get in. <laughs> uh, but they do. They have. It's like really you have to be on time. I mean, it's really hard for comics who do 
Yeah, right. uh, well, for me, because they all went to conservatory and they're all really disciplined. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, I'll be there. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, but they have sexual harassment. And I'm like, there's no way that there should be sexual harassment rules in the theater. Everyone's naked, running right. around, changing clothes. We grab each other's asses, and it's there's no boundaries. That's what what theater's about is right. no boundaries. But I don't think there's ever been a sexual harassment suit has there in stand in up? theater oh in theater i oh yeah i think there there's been, been some stuff there was some guy wasn't a suit it was like a criminal investigation where um there was a girl who was like 16 who was sleeping with the star of something like a major star right and there was like a big to do oh, that's so and it's all my actor friends them. were yeah. like yeah but she lo- she wanted the relationship like they don't understand like statutory like it's yeah, just a very she's different 16. yeah it's, it's mostly like casting like the guy who wrote you light up my life and uh right. Right. he was like he was in deep shit for doing craigslist audition right. calls mm-hmm. and then just like trying to fuck the women oh that's good so. oh, i should do that it's no. so hard for me because i like that song <laughs> Ooh, it's such a boring. I love it. it. It's pretty oh, wait, it don't back. sing it, because fucking Patrick will take it out of the fucking show. <laughs> um, all right, Sam. Yeah. Where did you grow up? I grew up in New York City. Yeah, which area? Uh, Chelsea originally. Wow, yeah. you're yeah. so cool. Am I? Yes. I think you're cool. Ugh. I like that we're neighbors. I, I like know. I love that. We should fucking have coffee and shit. Let's and write coffee. jokes. All right, so. You grew, and where'd you go to uh, school? Which I went school? to a school called Browning, which is like a preppy school in the Upper East Side. Right. Wow. Now, your father, your yeah. birth father. Yeah, I just talked to him on the phone right before. I had no talked way. to him in months. Yeah. He's, so, like, he's like 82. Wow. Yeah, he's an old guy. Wait, how old was he when you were born? Uh, 52. My father was 48. And that was fucking old. Yeah. When, in 1962, the year of my birth. Um... And they're supposed to say I look great, you fucking assholes. You look fantastic. You, Shut up. Uh, it's it's a given, Judy. Shut up. So uh your father was not your birth father was not a part of your life. And he's a no. Jew. Uh he, it's rare, right? They yeah, that's stick what I don't guilt, understand. I yeah. yeah. So what happened? Like what was the situation with your mother and your birth father? He uh, you know, I, I poke around with it, but I didn't right. press too often, especially till I was older, and I think right. the situation is that they were dating casually and Right. And she got pregnant. And she got pregnant and she was a little older, so she wanted this was her shot to have a How kid. How old I was think. she when she had a kid? I'd say forty. That's my Wow. Yeah. Well, my mother's dead. So. All right, so go ahead. That's pretty brave from yeah. that time, I have to say. Yeah, she kind of... Uh, uh, excuse me, 1962, my mother was 40. Go ahead. Yeah, she... What year were yeah, you but born? Yeah, your, mo- mo- your mother was married. Uh, Not brave about that. Okay, but 86. He was born in 80. Fucking six. I already... Gr- I could be your fucking mother. Yeah. He- <laughs> but you look great. Okay, But no, I meant it was brave of the mother up. because... Yes, I know. All right, yeah. so she's 40. Yeah. Uh, what did she do for a living? She's an artist. She was a teacher for a while, and then she's an artist. Oh, my God. That's yeah, so cute. very talented so, painter. So you grew up with a single mom? For a few years. And she, then she... she up, yeah, she ended up marrying, but... Uh, Who did she marry? Uh, my dad's a lawyer. He's Is a, he a J-E-W? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're all Jew. I'm very Jewish. I love that. I was pushed on it so much, though, the whole... I, I not, I'm more culturally Jewish than right, actually right, religious. Right, 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 right. I like Chinese I know food when we although when Browning because I, I know the school pretty well is because so uh, as you know that also Karen Berggren also grew up here Chapin I believe on the Upper yes. East Side Chapin sure you fucking private school spoiled <laughs> fucking brats I went to public school in New Jersey you know what I really enjoy when you drive me around Judy shut up <laughs> so um, so you're an only child. Well, I have a stepbrother and a stepsister, and uh, I have a half brother who lives in California who I've not met. Uh, He's your your birth father's. Yeah, yeah, I haven't met him. How old is he? I like threw it out there. I was like, yeah, I'd like to. I told uh, I told my biological father. Uh, it's funny, you know. It's it's weird to call him. Right. I, I used to have a joke where he'd be like, "Is he was he a good father?" And I'm like, "If he were, I probably wouldn't refer to him as my biological <laughs> father." <you know? laughs> That's a great. But. Uh, he, yeah, I kind of threw it out there. I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of curious to meet him, if anything. Right. And he was like, yeah, I threw it out there. He didn't really seem interested. <laughs> How old is he? Uh, he's older. He's probably late 40s by now. Okay, that's wow. not fucking old, Older asshole. than me. I didn't say old. So, I said older. Wait, so... <laughs> All right, so but why can't you go? Is he on Facecock or anything? He is, but I'm just like, I, you know, if he's not really feeling, it, I don't want to force it. You know, right. that's I, if I had a 
blood relative that I didn't know. I just did 23 and me. I just mailed it oh, today. You did? Yes. Are you nervous? I, no, because I know it's going to be Ashkenazi Jew, boring shit. That's what, you know, there's nothing. Like, what the right. fuck? Anyway, except my grandparents were cousins. Um, <sighs> That's good. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's good. It's like juicy and gossipy. By the way, I know it's totally legal and it's fine. Oh, they were like second cousins or something. I can I tell you my good friend Victoria, you know her parents yes. are first cousins. First cousins, which is legal. That's mental. She seems. Fine. It may be legal, but it's, it's yeah, it's a little blood. weird. Well, it's one of those things like it will depend. You know, if you grow up with your cousin, it's really weird. Cousin but, fuckers always bring up other prominent yeah. cousin fuckers like yeah. FDR and Eleanor Roosevelt yeah, right. were like yeah. third cousins. I'm like, yeah, yeah but that doesn't. Right. When you're finding loopholes, anyway. when you're finding loopholes in cousin fucking, that's already yeah. a problem. Yeah. I would say. I, I agree. Right. Now, okay, so you grow up, you're going to this private, yeah, preppy. I felt, I think that's part of like in in my mind. I was like, I related to being an outsider because right. you know I was technically. Were you the only one with like an artist single mom? Well, at uh, that well, point, that she was, wasn't she, she single. Was that was. Yeah. Her, I mean, I think a lot of parents at a different right, place right, they came right. from than where they ended up. But, right. but uh, I I felt like in some ways an outsider because, right. uh, you know, I was in, in some ways an outsider in the family because I was, there were two step siblings and right. I was not related. They were overachievers. They were older than me. One went to Harvard Law, went to Columbia Law. Oh, fuck them. I, it was, yeah, and it's the annoying. Fa- and the, your stepfather? And he was a successful lawyer. Uh-huh. So there was- So you moved out of Chelsea. Yeah, we were on the Upper East Side at that point. Ugh. I, I mean, great. That's where, yeah. that's where Karen lives. And then- uh, Judy is picking on me. I think you miss Lauren. No, I love you. Okay, I love you, too. I love you. I love you. Love you. Go ahead. I like she does it very well, where she's it's the poke, the poke, and then the bring back. Yeah, the next I do. I do. Well, yeah. it, is, it is a sign of affection. Yes. I do. I feel like it's If a sign I'm of really affection. nice to you, then you know that you I fucking you. hate your guts. Right. So, Go then, so then, uh, yeah, and then you, there's parts of the school that were great, but there was also parts that it was like, you know, that I, I didn't connect to. Did you ever live with the step? Uh, your step siblings? yeah we live together oh okay yeah i'm i'm i talked to my brother a good amount i talked to him yesterday are they in new york they both live in brooklyn oh okay. i mean yeah <laughs> so uh you what so he left the birth father can, yeah like can you tell your joke about the which one about um the one about uh that your you showed a picture of your birth father to your girlfriend Oh, and she's like, oh, you guys, oh, fuck, I don't even remember that joke. Yeah, it looks like, it looks, you guys look exactly. Oh, you, look like, you guys look like, oh my God, you look like you guys were separated at birth. And I was like, we were. Yeah, I love that joke. <laughs> I fucking love that joke. I have joke. a lot of jokes about him and it used to make him uncomfortable because he would show up at shows. Yeah, that's would, great. I love that. Yeah. How did you do the whole like finding him or was that your question? Uh, yeah, he, I wanted, so he left immediately? You know what it was? I had a, I had a girlfriend in college and she was the parent oh she her, she was a child of two psychologists so she was just Ugh. unbearable was right. she mental yeah she yeah. would she i remember so she'd when, analyze you she, all day all day and she would say things like you know where well, your problem is all your problems come from not me she would she would say all your problems come from not meeting your birth father and then she would bait me in the fights and then when i'd react she would say who are you really yelling at oh my <laughs> god i fucking hate her she was but she was a cunt and then I remember no, years but later. No, by the way, I think you're a comedian because of the father thing. I think so. I think right. that. Well, yeah. There's. But he's, you know, there's a hole. There's a hole. But then, like last week, Lenny Marcus was co-hosting, and he has no holes. Right. And he's a comedian. You're a brilliant joke writer. I Thank mean, you. that's not. Right. You're right. But well, I do believe that the the that angst and that like fuck you. Sort of. It's unconscious. I think a lot of it is unconscious. You know. So wait. So you don't know him at all. Do you? No, know? I don't. I, I. I. mean, he wants to get lunch tomorrow. No, so no, no. I'm talking no, about then. as as a kid. Like so you, when you're no. you're in college, you're with the girlfriend. You wait. Still did you? Him. But I want. Did you? When did you find out that your stepfather wasn't your? Uh, well, I, I knew pretty early on. I, I don't know. I mean, the I mean exact you were moment. very young when they got married, right? Yeah, I was very young. I so was you don't remember seven. that? Oh, you were seven. I thought you were like two. No. Okay, so you knew that. You, yeah. you knew you didn't have a father. But did your mother ever say to you I before got they got married? My, 
Yeah, but she kind of said it in a way where she was like, Like, this what was is... the Jewish, <laughs> your father was uh, in the Holocaust, but mom, that was that like was... 40 fucking years ago. <laughs> I know, but he went back. Yeah, I go think ahead. she said, well, you know, he wants, my dad is, you know, he's a lawyer and he's very into the legal system. So he was like, I want to legally adopt you. I want to take you to court. No, the, uh, that's nice. The, what do you mean? Your, your, your your adoptive father. She wants yeah, that's, you what, that's what he would say. Yeah, right. right, but I'm saying your birth father. Uh, when did you? He left a note in a safety deposit box at the bank, and it was pretty. It was like a well-written version of "Hey, I fucked up." You know, it was like. And had when did you? How old were you when you saw that? Eighteen. Did wow. you? So before that, you knew nothing of him. Nothing. And, and what it was, did you? It was did you know he was alive? alive? Yeah, I'd bring it up, and, and she would get, what would she'd she get say? uncomfortable about him. She'd tell me stories that he would do some. I guess they were into each other on the street once, and uh, when I was a baby, and they just bumped into each other. <gasps> That's New York. It's I mean, right. So he and he, she was like, "This is your son," and he just said, "He looks like you," and walked away. What Ew. a fuck! I fucking hate him. Yeah. Well, I hope he pays for lunch. Uh. Yeah, I guess he will. He he has had a weird life because he was like a successful ad man in his day, but now I don't think he really is. Mm. I don't think he saved well. And uh, his wife, I like a lot. His so wife, he's his, like John Hamm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like what really happened, right? Yeah. But uh, he, his wife is, I like, she's a good person. And uh, she's... So obviously he picks good women, but he's a dick. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. I think he's, uh, I think he's... A g- decent man, but a bad father, I right. would say. I, He's like Don Draper. He kind of is. I yeah. know. I said John Hamm. I know, but I'm now making Now you did the, the yes, yeah. that's very good. Uh, so, yeah. so you're adoptive, he adopts you, how old are you? I think I was like six or seven, and uh, it was it was before the wedding. I, no, yeah. I, he legally adopted me after the wedding, so right. I was probably like nine. And uh, he took me to court, we went down <laughs> to downtown for it, and... Uh, I remember my last name is actually Greenberg from my mom's side when I was coming up. So oh, very so, nice. So my mom was that's like, not Jewish at all. <laughs> yeah. So I remember she. Uh, oh, mom! Thank God for morale. I feel like I'm getting more road yeah. bookings because yeah. of this, you know. So it, I remember she was like, "Right, practice morale. Practice right. spelling that." He wants you to take his name, and I said, "Okay." I was, you know. Oh, like, what a great guy! So, Are yeah. you close with him? Yeah, I am. I like yeah. him a lot. Uh, yeah, I love it close. that he that he said that very. Affirmative. I don't know if I've yeah. ever talked about this on a podcast. I don't think. I mean, I've like gone in a. Right. I've talked about it, but no one's ever dug this closely you know, I fu- to it. I, you know, I uh, adopted my older son. My ex yeah. had him, uh, and then my uh, ex hadn't adopted Ben, my younger son, when we broke up, and it was a precedent-setting case in the state of New York when I allowed her to adopt because she's not biologically connected to him she we didn't we weren't married legally because he couldn't be and uh you know she wasn't in a res- rela- your residence right so and it was one of the greatest experiences even though you know everyone in my family do not let her adopt i don't understand <laughs> do not let her near her and i was like I, if i was married i it would be her you know, and the other thing was we're we're separated, and I was like, the only constant he has is his brother, and it's like, what is that going to be like when I'm like, well, you're you're going to go back and forth, and you're going to stay with me. I wanted them to have something. Right. Making solid. it official does help. Yeah, I mean, it makes and you feel better about it. And but that's it's why also I... like they're not biologically related at all, and they are such brothers. They are like, yeah. you know. All right. So anyway, so I, I was just saying that because I get that whole going downtown process. Were you in the judge's chambers? Yeah. Yeah. It's so emotional. Did it's they cry? I, I was too young to realize the significance. Right. I think it, it was emotional for my dad, I think. Yeah. I think for him, it was yeah, I, a big moment. Uh, Henry, I look back and I'm like, oh, that's, that's really yeah, nice. Yeah. Now that you're that. an adult, it's yeah. like, and yeah, Henry reached over to Ben and said, now we're full brothers and hugged him Aww. and I was like <laughs> <laughs> um, little did I know that you know the next year he'd be beating the shit out of him because he was getting <laughs> on his nerves but anyway welcome to play it a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business sports tech entertainment and more play it at play.it so then where did you go to college because I can't find I that went to, anywhere well, I, okay I went to 
Tulane as a freshman. Tulane. And, and I was a freshman for Katrina, so it hit instantly. No Once fucking was, way. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I basically had to evacuate. And uh, what were you studying? I didn't really have a major then. Right. I was. I made. A, I remember I was in a couple of film classes, and I right. made. I made a movie that uh, that was kind of fun to make. There, I I took philo- philo- uh, philosophy, all kinds right. of weird. Co- I had no area of focus, and I started doing stand up there. Weirdly enough, like Bill Burr came down and let me open for him. Ted what? Al- Ted Alexandro. Wow. wow. Yeah, and it was it was great. Uh, they were both, and then like ten years later, I was on Conan with Bill Burr. Isn't and, that fucking? And he great. was like, he was like. Did Wait. we meet before? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I said, I opened for you in my college. And he's like, oh, how were we? And I was like, well, you were great. Yeah. <laughs> no, Teddy, but you, had, for me. you had just started like that year and then you opened for him or you did it a little bit in high school? Um, I had, I had been handing out flyers and stuff and barking Ugh. and doing, I, I did it both for money, but then also for, uh, you know, to get stage, stage time. time. Right. Let me ask you a question. When you're at the cellar, yeah. And you're going to the Village Underground to do a set. And mm-hmm. those guys are on the corner handing out flyers for like a, another comedy club down yeah. the street. And they're like, hey, comedy, comedy, we can create comedy. Do they ever try to hand you a flyer? I, I've i kind of become friendly with a couple of them. So, oh, okay. that, so now, because uh, I, for whatever reason, always kind of, I remember doing it and how much I hated it. And right. I know some of them are trying to be comics. Right. So I definitely. Uh, I see some like go to hand me and then go oh uh, and then there's like really young ones who are like 18 who are like comedy show and i'm like i have fucking <laughs> underwear older than you you know <laughs> so yeah so i right, was a freshman so, for that so I you evacuate. leave tulane yeah yeah i evacuate i i by the way did you hate george bush during that time yeah or you weren't that political i no, i mean i i didn't like him but i uh i think that was I think he had a little goodwill from 9-11 from some right. people, and then it was starting to really fade away. Right. Just the way Giuliani had goodwill here, yeah. I think. Yeah, uh, and now he's a fucking well, psychopath. Yeah, I knew his son, actually, a little bit growing up. No way! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he, wow. was he crazy? He tried to kill me at a summer camp my parents what? sent me to, yeah. Okay, yeah. wait, back yeah. up. Is this well, the no! son that fell asleep, like, during... What's yeah, he like only the... has one son and one daughter. Right. Yeah. A- Andrew or something. Andrew. Right. And he was. it was weird, because we were like... Buddies for a little while. Mm-hmm. We were so young. This is probably okay, we were probably yeah. like nine or okay, something. Okay, so then you go to Jew camp or no? It was like a. It wasn't even like a real camp. It was like a one day a week, right? Like baseball or something. Okay, it was something so like yeah, that. go ahead. And he was there, and they had like one part of the day where it was like, oh, we go swimming now in this like it was right. like Randall's Island or somewhere near right. there. There was like some water area. That's great. And we go in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was disgusting. Yeah, and he. I did something to provoke Okay, him. your Jew parents sent you to fucking Randall's Island? Go ahead. <laughs> Many times. That's yeah. where we played sports. Yeah. And uh, I remember he just like held me under the water What'd you do long. to provoke him? I don't remember. For the life of me, I don't remember. But he he had a short fuse. And he was actually a good athlete. He was like he was like a big fat kid. Right. And he would just I destroy he the baseball. Fat. I think, yeah, he was a chubby kid. And he uh, and I ended up being like a, a kicker in college. It was right. the most random thing. And the daughter <laughs> voted for uh, Hillary. Right. Well, the mother was in an acting class with me. Judith? N- no, no, that's Hanover. the new one. Yes, Donna Hanover, Donna Hanover Giuliani. She yeah. was nice. She yeah, was, she was very nice. Was really and then talented. she finds out that they're fucking getting divorced on fucking... I, I hate Giuliani. He's a bad guy. He's a shithole. Okay, so... So, yeah, so... Uh, we're so you come back from uh, Tulane. Yeah. I, I, now at this point, no birth father. We're gonna get. To- no, I think that's where it started. Probably. Okay. Wow. So. And then. Uh, How do you get a hold of him? And you get the note. Yeah. Is I, well, the I, note after the first year of college or before? Like, how like old were you? you? I think I might have met him while I was here, and I I called him, and I guess I found out later when I called him for the first time he was on the can. <laughs> So he uh, he picked up the phone. He's like, hey. Who fucking picks up the phone when they're taking a shit? Well, his wife. He's like, Sam's calling. Your biological son's right. calling. And he's like, I'll, I'll take it. And uh, the note basically apologized. Uh, he's a good, I mean, he's a really good bullshitter. He's an right. ad man. He's like, he's right. good at writing stuff like that. Right. And he like kind of, a con artist. <laughs> did you tell your mother that no. you were going to call him? Yeah, I mean that's why I got the number. Yeah. I said I'd like it if you could find his number for me. You know. Uh, oh, and, I love your mother. And she kind of just told me like, look, I I worry because you're my son. She kind of said it in those right. ways, but then uh, she's like, but you have a right to. Right. And I kind of talked to my uh, father who adopted me about it, and he, you know, he wasn't really. 
he wasn't really nervous about it. He's like, yeah, I did a good job. So yeah, I, fuck I don't him. feel yeah. I love about. that. Yeah, and uh, he did the neurotic. Yeah, they they both asked me about it, and I was like, yeah. I mean, so he's you not, called him? Did when you called him? Uh, I remember. I, on what stage, was the first I, thing I, you said? Uh, we'll do the phone call. I'll be your father. Go ahead. I don't remember. First I said phone. something like, "Hey, it's Sam. Uh, I was wondering if you want to." Uh... Hi, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh my god, I've been dying to talk to you. Uh, why? <laughs> What's going on? He said right, something yeah. like, "You want to meet?" It was weird because I, I met him in a uh, I met him in a like little diner or something, and he said something along the lines of, uh, "Did he? Wh- what was it like looking at him for the he first time?" Did you feel like lost? I'll show you a did picture you, after did the you, podcast. Did you freak out when you saw him? Uh, no, I was just kind of like, I guess this like is Like, you some... see someone who looks exactly like you and I you I never did... had that. The closest I had was my grandfather, you know? Right, so did you, were you like, oh my God, that's him? Like, you just, Yeah, kinda, like... we both kind of cracked up for a second, and we, I was like, oh man, and he just kind of asked... Did he hug you? I don't think so. He's an asshole! Uh, on the, when we left, he did. Donald. Uh, yeah. I mean... What did, did he pay? Yeah, he okay. always pays. All right. Uh... It's weird. His side of the family is very interesting. His brother's a very famous photographer, like very famous. Uh-huh. Uh And then his son. We're not finding out who that is. His name is uh, Arthur Elgord. Mm-hmm. He's oh, a, yeah, I know. Yeah, he's. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> their son is now a movie star who is on the cover of Rolling Stone. Who? His name is Ansel Elgord. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. a big time movie well, star. He, he came. He, I don't remember the name of the movie. I haven't seen it, but he seems like a sweet kid. I mean, yeah. I met him. I met him, and uh, he came to see me at Caroline's yeah, he's, once. Yeah. So he's he's your half brother. I have two. I mean, no, they're cousins technically. Oh, cousins. Okay. And yeah. they both oh, came. Oh, Why are they cousins technically? Uh, because if it's your father, it's his brother. Birth father. It's his bro- oh, birth right, his fr- brother. brother. Yeah. Sorry. So they they all came to a, him and the, the two kids uh, came to a show once, and they were they were both really nice. They seemed like wow. nice guys. How come they have a different last name? The same than Greenberg. Or oh, right, Greenberg that's there. That would have been yeah. your uh, right. oh, okay. So uh, then you come back from Julane. Yeah. Uh, you've met your birth father. Yeah. Do you was, go to back to college? I went back to Tulane for a year and a half. Okay. And uh, I really became heavy in the stand up. And there was, the, right. the city was pretty devastated and very dangerous. Right. You know, like, uh, I remember, like, nice areas like St. Charles Avenue, which is like the really yeah. fancy strip. I remember, it's not far from campus. I remember right. my friend got held up at gunpoint like no on that fucking avenue. Way. I think my best friend there. And that was like the one night I didn't go out with him. It was so weird. Oh, you must have felt so guilty. I felt guilty, but I, he's also a moron. He's like one of those macho guys. The right. guy pulls a gun on him. He goes, go fuck yourself. No and, way. And and the guy just didn't do anything. And my other friend lost his wallet, but this guy was like, fuck right. you, and you're not mugging me. And... Oh, I, I like that approach. I like it, but I'm also like, you could have died. Right. If he was on like drugs, he could have just killed right. him. Okay, so then you, you quit. Uh, you drop out. You drop out? No, I didn't. I My parents would not take that for an answer, so I ended up transferring to NYU. Good and, for those Jews! And, uh, and I, you finished there. I finished there. I became really into uh So were you doing there. the cellar or... No, I, I wasn't past the cellar for years. After right. I mean, it took for, you But know, you were right there. I wouldn't Were you go. there during Boston Comedy Club? No. Okay. I mean, I guess the club existed, but I didn't... I was uh, very intimidated by the cellar at yeah. the time. I uh-huh. kind of looked at it as the mecca of stand-up right, in New York, right. and I didn't want to show my face there until right. I thought that I like belonged there. Good move, good move. A lot of comics now, they will just hang out, and I'm kind of like, well, you should be out working and being among your peers for now, and then... Oh, yeah. And I, and I just see it as kind of like... I'm not really big into networking, you know? Uh, it's such a pain in the ass. I... I I just didn't want to be known as that guy. Right. I'd seen people do that, and I never, I never liked it. Did you ever have jobs when you were starting out? Yeah, like I had to... a couple of part-time jobs. Uh, I had, uh, I tutored for a while. What'd you tutor? Uh, uh, math and uh, English. <gasps> yeah, you got to tutor my son. I'm not smart. I'm okay, really that's not. good. That's great that you got to. What, how old were they? I, when... I worked for a catering company for like Wait, a couple months. Wait, how can you tutor and not be smart? Well, how old were the kids? Uh, they were, they were generally very young. Oh, I went right. with very young. Right. And then Whatever. I worked for a catering company for a couple months. I did some menial tasks, and I really I was reading Bukowski at the time, and I yeah. really thought it was really cool. I'd get like right. drunk afterwards right. and stuff. And then I, as time went on, I was like, well, I can't be. What happened was around twenty four. I did uh, a festival in Atlanta called Laughing Skull. Yeah. And I won it. And the prize was 
a year's worth of road work. And the guy running what? it. What? That's yeah. a good prize. It was yeah. the best prize. It was like. Because you can really develop. I made a living for a year yeah. off of it. And then uh, my rent was low in Brooklyn. I had like three roommates. And yeah. I uh, I ended up following up with the clubs to the point that some rebooked me as a headliner. Right. And uh, and they were shitty clubs. Like right, the clubs right, I right. wouldn't want to set foot in anymore. Right. But uh, one of them was Laughs in Kirkland. <laughs> but uh, I'm like, I'd go back there. But, uh, you know, that's when like I started. Like I still had like then some of those realize, part-time things. Right. But like I, It doesn't matter. You're still a comic even if you're doing those part-time things. Yeah, I didn't feel like a comic till my first like legit TV credit. Right. Even though I was like working as one, I was like, yeah, right. I feel like the first one is where you feel like, oh, this is real. Right. Now, you have called yourself a dumb kid. You're not My mom dumb. hates that. Yeah, she gets on me. I remember, she, I, did, I think I said that in somewhere. My mom was yeah. so angry. She, she used, you know what? It was all about, and it's all relative, I guess. But, uh, you know, when I was with, around my brother and sister, I felt really dumb. And I, and I would act out because right. of that. I would, I like, drank, how did you act, drank? A lot of drinking when I was younger. Right. And a lot of uh, pot. And just, like, just feeling dumb. And it was, I guess, weird because my friends didn't see me that way, but I saw myself but that way. But first of all, you're no comic is dumb. No good right. comic is right. dumb. I wasn't a good comic. Were they yet. like oh, no? But up. were they like sort of academicy smart? Was yeah, that it? absolutely. And like you weren't as academic. I, I mean, I read, but not like them. Right. I, I, right. I wasn't informed like they were, and and right. they were just. Yeah, but they're not funny. <laughs> they're not funny. Right. I have met, and they're boring, right? Right. No, yes. they're not boring, but they're not like they're not like comics. Like you, right. you know, you want to be around your own, right? You know? Of course. And uh, yeah, I guess my yeah, my mom is really bothered when I say it. we've had a lot of talks about that because you're so fucking smart. Right? There's <laughs> nothing dumb about you. Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play dot it. Um. Okay. Now. I, I want to I the other reason I'd love you is because you push the envelope and uh, I believe in the envelope pushing because I don't fucking care you know if you're politically correct you know I believe that this knee jerk it wasn't like this in the 80s and 90s like you could go on stage and say whatever the fuck you wanted. No one was videotaping you. Right. No one was no like, social justice I'm so warriors. offended, right. I'm so offended. Oh. Well, what, was, what was scary for me was when I was, uh, before I'd done any TV or anything a few years ago, I I got attacked by this social justice warrior online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was for a rape joke. Yes, I told now him. I gotta tell you. Yeah. That rape joke is fucking hilarious. It's a good joke. And, and, and it's a joke. It's a joke. And if you take it apart, it's a fucking joke. Yeah, not about a rape. I remember at the time it was it was pretty uh, it was pretty scary because I'd never been in that situation. Right, of before. course, the first well, time what, it happened. What was the joke? There's... I said I was sleeping with. Uh, there were two jokes. Yeah, that I one like of them him. was uh, my. Well, now you know the punchline. But I said no. I would never. Uh, I say my girlfriend never made me wear a condom, you know, because she was on the pill, Ambien. And uh, is that it's just very a fun funny. mystery? Very right? funny. And the other one was I said uh, I was sleeping with a black woman. And the whole time we were doing it, she dropped the N word. The whole time we were having sex, she was like, "No." And then I kind of paused. And I'm like, "You guys were all scared that I was going to say the N word." And then you're like, "Thank God, it's a rape joke." Yeah. So that's I th- funny. So I thought that's I was kind of mocking. Brilliant... I thought I was kind of mocking yeah. the social justice warriors it, with are. that with that joke. And then. Uh, and, it's such a brilliant. And you know, I was a young peop- comic with that, people with that, that joke. who don't think. I mean, like, right? The, if I heard those jokes, I'd be like, "This kid's fucking brilliant." I, like, got, yelled, I got yelled at online once because I used to have a joke where I said, "I, I got so bo- bored at a party, I slipped myself a roofie," <laughs> and um, <laughs> and I got a whole thing. I got roofied at a party in Tulane. No way. Because I, I guess I some girl was Bill Cosby there. <laughs> <laughs> I took a girl's, uh, she said, I can't finish this drink. And I was like, I'll take it. And apparently some guy was roofing her with that oh drink. So I got roofied. So what happened? Did you fall asleep there? It, it happened to me and another guy. And I got home somehow. But I remember I got a voicemail from the guy the next day. And he was just like, ah. Like what he was saying made no sense. The guy who. Uh, no, me and just a friend got roofied. Right. But you never found out who the roofie was. I didn't know. It was, was at a frat party. And, and the, Who the fuck? That pisses Deke, me off. That's who. Deke at Deke. Tulane. 
who was thrown wow. off campus for doing blackface, apparently. Oh, God. So not uh, not good people. So, wow. okay. So you do these. He's probably you- in the cabinet. <laughs> Very funny, Karen. <laughs> so you do these jokes and you're getting... Yeah, so I got a lot of backlash and it didn't really catch anything on until I responded to it. I wrote a long thing responding uh, point by point to what she said about me. She omitted the punchline on one of the jokes. Right. And I ran it by Colin Quinn and he and I said, do you think I should post this? Because I really respected his views on right. this stuff and I thought he's he had attacked political correctness a lot. Right. And he said, fuck her. She omitted your punchline. This is completely out of line. He's like, take out this one line. It's kind of gay. That's all he said. No, oh, that's <laughs> In the funny. Response. He's like, but the rest of it is is I really like. And uh, so I posted that and it caught a lot of heat. And I, some people, you really see where they stand on those issues. And I'd always had this, I grew up listening to George Carlin. It was to me, it was always like, you know, the joke is a joke. Right. And, if, and you can tell who the person is and where they stand, I think, by the joke. They don't right. have to, it's like a good book. You don't have to spell out, this is what I'm saying. Right, right, right. right. It's can, all context and personality. I mean, I don't think it's a good idea for somebody who's new to comedy to make a joke like that because they don't have a personality yet on stage and right. nobody knows who they are. Right. But by that point, you were... I was uh, working clubs. Yeah. I think, I was at the cellar at that point. I think uh, people, yeah, people really jumped on that and it was... Uh, do, do you do you think it was right to engage, or do you think that maybe you shouldn't have? I'm just wondering. I if, think like, it if, was right, but I've seen other people handle things differently. Where they just if they just let it go, it goes away. But I think it was important for me. At the no, time. I think you're absolutely right. right. I always you, you know I've it. gotten so many. You know, I did a joke about uh, these Hasidic rabbis in Brooklyn who were convicted of laundering right. Colombian they, they drug money. Yeah. Money. And then I said that I know they're innocent because the Hasidim don't launder anything. <laughs> and I got yeah. letters of, uh, they called us a dirty Jew and you're promoting the dirty Jew. And it was like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. You right, know, right. Yeah, you're proving that you have no sense of humor about right, yourself. I right. also think like, I'm also not, I just point out, I'm not above apologizing for something, but right. I'm not going to be forced into an right. apology. Like if I feel bad about something, of course I'll say I'm sorry. But you but these, seem like you have, you seem like such a sensitive you're person. Thoughtful. Oh, you're I'm very thoughtful. sensitive. Yeah. I, I, uh, I guess I, uh, I just felt that like, yeah, if I, if I was sorry, I would have had no problem apologizing, right. but I just, I think it sets a, d- a dangerous precedent when you start apologizing for jokes because right. a, l- a lot of the times I'm working out a joke and who are you to, I mean, if it's right. in a special, go ahead, but a lot of times I'm working right. out a and joke. Right, and it's like half these people say shit in their personal life, but, you know, no one's there, there's no audience, and, and it's like, shut the fuck up. Look at the intent of of the ju- look intent at the and intent. context are often right. uh, and context uh, removed are everything. everything yeah but they're often not taken out and I'm never I never go up on stage being like let me hurt someone in the right. crowd like right. I would never do that but you know sometimes someone leaves her and that it doesn't feel good for me but also a lot of the time the people that really really this is a good example someone uh, sent me a, a note. Uh, when that happened, a long note about what a disgusting person I am. Mm -hmm. And they said, I have a daughter. Like, how would you feel? I have a daughter. And I remember, I just wrote back. They probably voted for Trump too. (laughs) Well, I wrote back, how old is your daughter? And can I see a picture of her? Ah, I love it. And she wrote back, I kind I get it now. I'm sorry. She got. Oh, I, that's it was amazing great. That, that like that's all it took is like just right. making a joke. And, and she kind of was like, "All right." I yeah. under, she goes, "My husband and I laughed at that." Right. And I was like, "Well, then understand that." Like, I'm, I heard Doug Stanhope say I something that, that I I heard Doug Stanhope say something story. that I loved. Yeah. Where he said, "You know, some of these things I'm going to say you're going to hate, and just sit them out." And the next thing you might love, and that's, right. and that should be for anything. Like right. there, there are parts of my favorite movies, and I'm like, I didn't love that part, right? But I love the movie. Yeah. So um, another I, joke. What? Go well, ahead. I was gonna say it's it's well, it's like the Trump thing. Like when he was saying, I just say these things. But then when you hear, but he's not funny, right? But he's also, not funny. No, but it's right. also then you hear stories like, well, actually, you don't just say these things, right? Like, right. You right. do them, and right. I. So I think like. You don't. There's nothing like your reputation is not at all. Like I said in my last. I said in my last anything. late night. Said I said uh, I'm a good. Cause I told uh, a pedophilia joke on Conan. I said, you know, I'm a good person. I have some dark uh, thoughts, but, I'm, but you know, as a clean comedian, you might love is uh, Bill Cosby. You should check <laughs> him out. So I think when you when you have those, you have to unfortunately have those saves now right. to qualify these jokes that I just think are funny on their own. But right. sometimes 
Uh, I talk to David Tell about that all the time. He talks about how politically correct crowds are. Right. And I said, yeah, I, I'm, more than ever, I have to have saves ready. Like, right. I'll, I'll comment on the joke. Oh, I just, to make yeah, the I joke go, work. what the fuck? You know, when I love doing <laughs> Holocaust jokes, you know? Sure. And, uh, and they're all like, Whoa! And I'm like, shut the fuck up. Just shut yeah. up. It happened. It, it's you know who else is fucking telling how I'm, that's what I was saying. Also, say. you're t- at least talking about it. A lot right, of people exactly. Don't know about it, so so I right. saw a New York Times headline yesterday that said, "Is, is it okay for ISIS to be parodied because they have this Real Housewives of ISIS thing?" Right. Yeah. Yeah. Of course it it's is. fucking okay. Right. right. Ever heard of Springtime for Hitler? Yeah. Exactly. That Mel Brooks, like the guy. It's funny because Mel Brooks is the guy who everyone at that newspaper would blow comedically. Right. They're all like, "This is this is brilliant, comedy. brilliant," but. But for whatever reason, the source uh, to them is everything. Right. And uh, I mean, a- F Troop was a fucking show. Right. Well, what, da, I, what da, I said da, in the, what I said da, in, the, da, 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 in response to this I woman, met Larry Storch. The, yeah. This woman right. who attacked me said, in her thing, I remember said the reasonable and intelligent Louis C.K. and I quoted a Louis rape joke. And I was right. like, so when it's your guy, it's okay. Right. But, right. You, but you're allowed to just wipe out an entire genre. Is rape okay? I was like. I also made a joke about ISIS. I also made right. a joke about uh, right. about the Boston Marathon. Right. Like I it's was making like jokes. These fucking little, you know, they take these sound bites. Even even you know, people. That's what they. That's what our whole fucking world is about. Little sound bites and not the whole picture. That are totally taken out right. of context. Well, they have a, they have an agenda. I mean, it's like right. it's their thing. Is like I was like, oh, where did this come? Oh, salon dot com. Where right. some of the articles are good, but some of them are are fake feminism. I right. call them. Where it's like, oh, you don't want equality. You want to. This woman who wrote this wanted to shame me. That right. it was a hit piece, right. plain and simple. And and I'm. I'm of course a feminist, you know, but right. but by definition, not by that. I think you should get to just shit on me, right? Of course, so many women quote unquote. And of course, you, I, I should have, you should be allowed to shit on me, but I should be allowed to right. respond. That's, but that's you my own. should shit on yourself first, yeah. Now and have them clean it up. Now the other joke that uh, you know, sort of, which is another fucking brilliant joke you said in Boston. Right after the marathon, can you share, please? Oh, uh, yeah, the Boston. Bo- I did. I did this in my half hour special, and it was in Boston, and it didn't do great. It had, and it's it, such it a had, great show. It had killed in Boston, but I like right. the Comedy Central kept it in. I said, yeah. uh, "Man, you know," because I have a lot of family from Boston. I said, yeah. when I first heard that news, I, w- I was devastated because my first thought was, "Me and my brother, we don't do anything together anymore." <laughs> That's funny. And uh, <laughs> and you know, it got groans, and then I followed it with that uh, N word joke, right. and it killed, and I was like. Oh, okay. Right. So, I, so, so I kind of, and then I did a fart joke, and that killed. And I was like, right. oh. "So you guys, it's not that you guys uh, have this amazing taste. You just are from Boston, so that's right. not funny." Right. Right. And they and they kept that in, which I liked. And uh, I had a. Um, I think I'm the only person. Uh, it's got to be late '80s, maybe early '90s, and I was on VH1 Stand Up Spotlight at the Ice House in Pasadena. Wow. And there were. There was this obviously anti-Semitic person in the front, and uh, and How is I it said, obvious? Uh, I yeah. said uh, something like, "Oh, do you know what Rosh Hashanah is?" Or something. I was doing some setup for a joke, and she goes, "No, I'm not Josh." I'm not jo-. I go, oh, "Are you Josh? You're not Josh." I go, "You want to know what Rosh Hashanah is?" And she's like. No, I, I go, it's when your boss doesn't come to work. So then <laughs> she great. gets up and walks out. Who's and then, offended by that? I know. And then the boyfriend is just sitting there. And I go, what are you going to do? And uh, he gets up. I go, you are such a wuss. But they kept it in. They oh, kept awesome. it. And, and oh, it was so great. You got to find that clip. That's so great. I know. That's what I love. So Also, there's nothing better, though, if the guy does. There's nothing better than breaking up a couple that shouldn't be together. Right, right. right. And also, he's such a fucking wuss that he, you know, she's ugh, she was an asshole. <laughs> um, what do you feel like now? You're from a different generation stand up wise. Mm-hmm. Um, I came, you know, I there were not. There were some female comics, you know, and I and I never play the female comic card because I'm like funny or not funny. And that's right. it. Do you in your generation, do you hear like guy comics saying shit about women comics? You know, 
we would hear it like, ah, yeah, yeah, you know, to Paulo, would always, ah, but you're a dyke, so you're not real. <laughs> and he'd be like, yeah, the f- you're the funniest. Fe-. And it's like, no, I'm just funny. And but do you? Is it still with, there? And with, and, but by the way, without any embarrassment, like, no, women aren't funny. Like, it right. was like something. It was like completely. But Judy Cole's funny. You know, well, uh, I a date a female comic, right, so uh, right, right. I've obviously yeah. had this conversation with her, and, and it's so hard to tell her she's not funny. You know, I you just, know. Uh, no, no uh, but, I, I, you know, we talk about it all the time, and and I love her comedy. So we talk about: is it easier for women? Is it harder for men? I think there, there are opportunities that you get as a female comic, but there's also ways where it's just so much harder, and it, you just have to be. I think there, if there are less of you. And they're putting you in a spot. You may get that opportunity sooner, but that might hurt you because. Well, there's less. You know, people are like, you know, female comics aren't funny. I go, there's plenty of guy comics who aren't funny. Sure. And the same ratio of shitty guy comics is the same as shitty female comics, except there's less of us. Right. right. But do you hear guys in your little? Uh, I'm trying to think. It's not that bad because right. we're mostly surrounded by really funny female comics. Right. So I think it's. I it's, feel like you guys are so much just on an equal footing you know like you don't it's not I'm that really like close that. friends with a lot of female comics yeah. like uh and now i mean i guess i just uh if they're funny they're funny it's not like a gender right, thing to right, me it's right. like it's that's kind of like i don't really try to make generalizations like you know racially or uh right no or with i just gender so yeah i mean i had to listen to it for so long that i wonder if this next group but that's made you, know, you so tough, probably. I mean, right. to, to to go through that, especially at the cellar, um, and also being. I mean, how many times I would headline on the road, and did you feel you, like your gender was on the line? Like if you had a uh, bad weekend, they're like, "We're not booking women." Well, for they a used while. to say that you'd call clubs and they'd say, "Hey, I'd like to," and they'd be like, "We had a woman here three months ago; she didn't do well." But it right. was the guy comics who were uncomfortable with the female head. There were a lot of times when sure. I would have these guy comics who were really uncomfortable that I was making more money than them, you right. know? And it was like, fuck you. I work my fucking ass off, you fucking And did they show. say anything to you? Or did no, they-, they would do shit before I went on to try to fuck me over, you know? Like, uh, you know, do... A ton of local references. Or no, like like it. shitty women crap, right. you know, and then bring a you know dumb the audience down or do a a gay joke or you know, I, I mean it was sinister. You know they they purposely right. did I shit to try that. to fuck up my set. Right. But that but that made your comedy probably the way it is, right? And that's kind of interesting too. Is that there's there is a toughness to your comedy which I right. really like. You know there's there's uh I wouldn't say like an intensity, but you you. You hold the room so well, and it's probably it's probably built oh my that god way. because I, and I've also done comedy in the worst lunch rooms, out, sure. outdoor fairs. I've done comedy while like there's mob bosses there threatening the guy who went on before me. I mean, like it's I That's I've hilarious. seen it all. I've seen it all, and it's like you can't you know fuck you. But what do you think when guys talk to you like when like because I obviously have a lot of respect for Nick DiPaolo, but like what do you think when a guy talks to you like that? Like when I when, love Nick. You I know, think I think he's one of the best joke writers ever. He's a great joke writer. I've known him forever. I'm like Nick, do my podcast. He's like, well, it's just be the same thing, you know. But you know, I I remember these guys. Like I remember when Louis started out, and yeah. you know, um, but they were all really cool to me. And I did Tough Crowd a lot too. But uh, you know, I like these guys. They don't have the same political leanings as I do. That's they part, don't. That's part of why I love Nick DiPaolo so right. much. Is that. I probably disagree with most of what right. he says on stage. I'm still laughing my ass off. Right. And it's also like Bill writer. Burr right. is fucking hilarious. Sure. Yeah. If you're a feminist, you might go, Ugh. but he's fucking hilarious. It's like you got to respect the people for their art. And all right, I don't believe the same shit you do, but you're fucking hilarious. Yeah. Um, That's the great thing about comedy. It just comes down and to you funny right. or And unfunny. when you talk to these people, you realize like a lot of them, like they come from a totally different background sure. right you know there's it would never occur to them to be feminist like that right not and it's also their... like nick never didn't say hi judy or you know like we never it was, he was he's funny and yeah. also i yeah that's a great point you make karen because uh I oh, mean, I, when, fuck when, that, karen. When, when, I, when i think about patrice o'neill i remember mm-hmm. the way you talk about women i'd be like this is so funny but you just don't these are different types of women than i date i don't relate right, to this because right. i'd be like yeah this is absolutely i believe true to the world that you live in but i don't 
I don't date women like this. Right, right. So, right. Uh, so I appreciate it, but not in a way where I'm like, that's right. my life. Right. I mean, that was his truth, Yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> um, okay, so there are certain questions we ask all guests. Okay. Um, one is, what pisses you off the most? Like, what fucking, what makes you want to fucking, like, <laughs> fucking fuck you, the the world? Like, what makes you just want to fucking punch a hole in the wall? I think phoniness. Like, really phony oh, people. I hate that. I fucking... I, if I... Yeah, really phony example. people. Uh, just someone who I know is... Oh, I'm trying to think of a great example, but, like... Phoniness or... Uh, or just uh, dismissiveness, maybe just someone just. Oh, I hate. Like, I hate getting dismissed. Yeah. yeah someone. So if someone. Like, oh, okay, great. If Sam. someone tries to big time you or something like, like someone, that's what part of why I hate LA so much. Right. I think is that. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. There's so much of that. And the fucking car. You sit in the fucking car all the time. I know. It makes me homicidal. I hate it. I Even hate if I'm it. in an Uber or something I'm like this. Right. Is it's the like worst. it's like I, I could be walking. I could ride. Like in New York, people are like, eh, 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 eh. you can ride your bike. You can walk. You can take an Uber. You can take a cab. You can take a bus. You can take the subway it's like you can take the new subway right have you been on the new subway no it's oh. only three stops so it's I like know. it's actually it's sort of in my neighborhood but it's really not right but it's also like they had to open it by the first so they only have three stops right. but that's fine but yeah i hate when people are dismissive like uh, i also just like as a comics i hate people that just get away strictly by their networking they right, get ahead right. with that like that they don't oh. put in work i respect I feel like there's somebody and in, you're thinking of specifically. Like, oh, there's many. It's not okay. just one person. There's so many. I know. I, I, I wouldn't mind hearing you. Right. <laughs> write that down. Right. Write that down. <laughs> no, I want to know who you're thinking of. I won't say it. I won't say it. No, he, he, uh, to him, right? No. no who I are mean, you so, no, oh, no, 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 I thought you meant it. you knew someone oh. to go. Oh, oh, no, there's so yeah, many. No, there's so Judy, many. But it's true. Just buy me a wine and I'll tell you. I'll decide. Loose lips, things, ships, whatever. I guess that's, you know... It's weird even saying that because you're like, well, that's, it, as I said, it's all, it's my world, you know? It's not like right. that's relatable to everybody. But it, it is because people do get dismissed. But I, I guess some people don't give a shit. But, yeah. it's, but it's also, yeah, I see people who work it and get things without doing the work. Like they get it by, and I never did that. Not right. that I, I could fuck anyone to get ahead because who the fuck's going to fuck me? And, uh, but it was also like, that really pisses me off yeah. that you don't have the shit to back it up and you keep failing up. I hate when people fail up. It's like, you know, this person's incompetent. They get fail. They get fired from whatever show they're working on or whatever. And then they get rehired. Yeah. Oh, it, you know, it's another one I really hate is uh, this is drives me nuts in comedy. It's just comedy that feels really insincere to me. Right. Like, like uh, comedy that, where someone is being really cute on stage, and I know they're a dark motherfucker. Right, right. And I'm like, ooh, that pisses or, me off. Or you know what I hate? When people fake anger. You know, when they get on stage, you're like, right. oh, I can't believe it. It's like, you're not fucking pissed off at that. So shut the fuck up. I, like this I, angry hate, it when people, yeah. I yeah. hate it when people fake, like, modesty, and they're like these arrogant people, and right. they're like, what do I know? I'm just like a poor blah, 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 blah. Right. I'm like, <laughs> I can't, like, I want to, I want to be like, Th that little act doesn't work for anybody you know, who's I met have, you for 10 minutes. I, one of my best friends is extremely wealthy because her husband created a very successful show. And they're the most generous people in the entire world. But it's like when we go out to eat, I always want to pay, you know. And she's like, put it away. I'm very wealthy. <laughs> and it's that. so funny. I love it. She's like, have you noticed how wealthy I am? And because she, she's so uncomfortable with it, and she's not, right. you know. But that's sincere. I fucking hate. I hate bullshit. I hate bullshit, and yeah. I hate. You know what I hate? When I'm leaving the subway and I'm walking up the stairs, don't look at your fucking phone and slow me the fuck down. Oh yeah. Do you, you know push what I mean? People. I go really. I'm like really in their face. You know, or they stand right. They get to the top and they stop. Because right. they're done going up the stairs, and just stand there right. in the entrance. Or uh, fuck you! How you about the fucking... people who walk on the street and they have like a lot of bags and stuff? They're not necessarily big right. people, but they have a lot of luggage. You yeah, know? and they're on the phone and they're and they're walking slowly. And you're like, th you're taking up like four lanes. In the Do you street. know how many times I go into the gym, and I'm walking in and someone's leaving but staring, looking down. 
right. and just like walks right into me. I'm gigantic. <laughs> I'm fucking gigantic. And they don't even say so. They look up uh, and they walk away. They don't right. even fucking say. So. We're right. like living in a zombie world. I know. It's crazy right. that. Shit. Yeah. Cause I don't I, know where this is all going. But uh, yeah. I think people are going to. It's bad. Yeah. It's, it's fucking damn, bad. Because you don't remember. You probably don't remember what it was like not to have. I remember what it was like not to have an answering machine. I guess I. I remember getting my first. Yeah, answering I machine. remember the first answering machine, and it was like, "Hello, please leave." I mean, it was really bad, and it was like kind of fun having an answering machine, right? And you'd like, go home. You wouldn't know. No one could contact you. I remember like get going on an audition, and like my agent saying, "Go home and just sit there and wait for the phone to ring," you geez. know, because you, they couldn't get a hold of you. You know, it sounds like torture. No, it was great. Yeah. No one cared. Like you would walk and you'd wonder, you'd wonder, yeah. And then you'd go home and be like, "Oh my God, I got this job!" You know, like you had no idea. It's you. That couldn't. was really the day when you can wait around at the show and someone doesn't show up and you just get the spot. Well, now, now you, I, now you I was someone. the backup right. at Catch. Me and Chris Rock were the two backups wow. at Catch Rising Star, and it was because people, if they were stuck in a cab or on the subway, couldn't call in, and I'd get paid fifty bucks to sit there in case someone didn't show up. And how often did that happen? Chris, it happened to, uh, he got on almost immediately and killed. Uh, I, there would always be someone like standing in the corner or something. It happened to me once, but it was of course during the check spot. And I was like, oh fuck, you know, you're not prepared. Right, right. Um, But yeah, they used to have backups. You'd pay you to sit there. 50 bucks, baby. Um, Okay, here's the other question we ask everyone. And I think I know the answer. Are you on any antidepressants? I'm not actually. And I that, knew it. That, that usually surprises people. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure I will be someday. I think. Uh, Ever? You've never? I, no. The only medication I've done, I had like ADD drugs and stuff, but nothing for. I, they fucking. F- I have ADD. I can't take them. They make your heart go. You're like. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's it makes me more. I'm like I'm already a little like low energy. It makes right. me even more robotic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've never done it. I'm I'm in therapy. I've been in therapy a long time. Oh, I love you. <laughs> what about um? Do you smoke pot? No, I can't. I, I I don't react well to it anymore. I used to smoke a lot of it. Yeah. No drinking. I drink a lot. Oh, all right, good. Um, because <laughs> I like pot. I went back to smoking pot. I stopped, and. The pot now is so good. Like when I was in high school in the 70s, I can't believe the shit we smoked and we thought it was, you know, great. I mean, you could actually get a bag of oregano and think it was pot. That's how bad the pot was. But um, (laughs) have you started? You uh, Well, you're, you know, you haven't had any medical marijuana. I mean, I've tried it. I just don't. What does it do to you? It makes me in your head. Yeah, I'm very in my head. Yeah, that's why I had stopped. And now. I'm very paranoid. Yeah, very, I, I, I think heard of my that the medical qualities. marijuana doesn't give you a high; it just gives you whatever. That's not no, true. it got me very high. Yeah, I just like I I I doubt everything about myself. Right, right, I'm right, very right. very negative. When right. I'm, oh, interesting. I remember I watched a Dave Chappelle special when I was really high, and uh, and I was like, I can't. I'm not a good enough comic. To, oh to God, do this. he's brilliant. Yeah, he's so good. But I like I don't need those. I have enough doubts without. I don't need it to be right. heightened at all. Right. Um, Sam, wow. where can people find you? Um, I'm on. Uh, I mean, I, I'm at the Comedy Cellar a lot. I'm no, be- like, what's your social media? Shit? Oh, it's just my name, Sam Morell, M O R R I L, on like Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. And you're, are you doing any more? Sp- you did a half hour special. Yeah, I'm gonna Comedy try Central. to record an hour this year. Yeah, uh, I want to do that so bad. I and- feel, I feel good about it. It's almost, it's coming along. I've been running it a lot. Right. Um, you don't. I haven't done a special in, um, I think, ten years. Oh, and- you got to do one. And I just need someone to fucking produce my special, you know. Oh, That's I, all I, I need. I'm look forward to it when it when it comes out. Oh God, I fuck, I have so much material. Um, you have a ton of new material. I know, like a ton. I know. I just want to fucking do a special, but it's like you're um you've aged out of this. You're aged. Uh, no, not really. No. Not. no, it's like who the fuck aged? Louis Black hasn't aged out. Mm. Fucking no. Fucks. I think you'll. <laughs> I think I you'll definitely. Hate I think you'll, it's always. I mean, some of my favorite comics have told me they struggled to sell right. a special, but yeah. I, I think I gotta you'll get find it made. A, you'll find a home for it right. somewhere. It'll, it'll get yeah, made. Yeah, but first I gotta get money to fucking. Uh, anyway, Sam, I can't thank you enough. I You're, love doing I love this. You. this is great. You're fucking great. It's fun. Your birth father's an asshole. 
<laughs> I might see him tomorrow. All right, tell him I said hi. <laughs> and um, come, can you we, come back? Yeah, I'd totally. love to have you I'd on. I'd love to come back. And um, that was really fun. Yeah, you're great, Thank you. Karen. Thank you. I Jared. like you, Karen. Where can oh, people? Can I, can well, I say yeah. one thing? Yeah, I have a. I think I'm having a podcast come out called uh, Moonlighting. Called, no, it's an old one. Oh, I right. have a new one called Keeping Joe, and it's with Joe Mackey and Phil Hanley. Oh, and, I love uh, those guys. And, and Liz, uh, the manager from the cellar. Oh, she's great! On it too. I guess she's your one. <laughs> and uh, and right. the the premise of the show is keeping Joe on the podcast because he doesn't want to do it. Right. Oh, that's so funny. we've recorded a few. It'll come out. Oh, soon. that's great. Why doesn't he want to do it? He hates doing anything like oh. that. He's, he if uh, he that voice, like I just don't get it. It's real. He's and so he's, happy. And, oh no, he's not. <laughs> I mean, but he seems so nice. Right. Like, hey, Judy, well, how he's, you uh, doing? He's uh, he's positive for right. sure, but he's definitely. But is is it is it? It's a forced positivity. No. Um, it might come from. Did his, he read a lot of positive? You know, I don't think so. He's no. very. He comes from a religious background, and oh, I think really? it's part of what just, religion. He's very Catholic. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> and uh, but he's. I love that. I'm he's like, a I great, love it too. A great comic. Um, Sam, you're the fucking best. Thank you for this. Was so fun. I loved it. I loved it. Karen, what your books? Why don't you plug your books? Yeah, following Polly, perfect. (laughs) Following Polly is a really fun. I love that book. It's really, it's really fun. Honestly, download it. I don't think you can buy it, and I don't think you can get a bookstore anymore. Oh, I have it in my bookshelf. Um, but it, but it's you can download it. Got a good review. And uh, perfect is overrated. Perfect is overrated, which is also really fun. But but I think, and well, actually, who are your, who are the listeners? Is uh, like who the fuck knows? Like perfect is overrated. Good for parents, but following Polly, good for all. Uh, Even boys, even boys. Yeah, I like like that. Yeah. Um, well, thank you guys for uh, doing this. Thank I really you. appreciate it. And I hate Trump. Uh, and uh, as we always say, so long! <laughs> and uh, everything was wonderful. I'll see you soon. Thank you for the visit. So long. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever find yourself playing the budgeting game? Well, with a Name Your Price tool from Progressive, you can find options that fit your budget and potentially lower your bills. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Not available in all states.